They're pretty awesome. So we know how to find octaves from the open string, right? We play an open E string, we go up to fret 12, we get an octave. But that's a long way to travel. And it'd be cool if we can play these just like I did right, right there, right? Move them all over the place. This is how you do it. So remember, the nut is fret zero, okay? I'm gonna place my first finger right here as if I had to fret that note to make a low E string, okay? To find the octave of this note, I go over two strings and up two frets. If you play chess at all, it's like you're moving your knight. Makes a little L. Come over two strings, up two frets. This is what it looks like. Makes that kind of shape. You can use your pinky or your third finger, whatever you like. Might want to use your pinky because what we're going to do is we're going to bring this onto the fretboard now so we can make it movable and play all kinds of octaves. All right, so I'm going to take this whole shape and I'm just going to slide it up one fret. Okay, now we're off of the open strings. We have an F on fret one of my E string and we have an F on fret three of our D string. You can just toggle those back and forth. There's your octaves, and, and now we can move them wherever we want, all right? And it's a good way to find notes on the D string and to find notes on the G string, and that's what, uh, part of what we're gonna do today, finishing off the fretboard, finding all of the notes, and, uh, and moving on with our guitar studies. Okay, so here's our F octaves. If you can, go ahead and play these with me, all right? We'll, we'll find some notes right now. There's our Fs. Let's bring that up here. We know this is a G on uh, the low E string, and if we use that as, as our anchor finger, right, and we make that little move, that little, little knight move, <laughs> over two, two strings, up two frets, making an L, okay, we can find our other G on the D string. So we got our G's now. I switched over to my third finger. Sometimes I'll play them this way. Take your pick on how you want to do this, okay? Just make sure that you have a, a one fret gap in between these two notes, all right? And you'll hear it if you're wrong. If, uh, if they're too close together, like, like you didn't reach far enough and you get this, that ain't it, right? And if you got massive hands and you're like this, that's not it either, right? Right there, that's where we want to be. These notes should sound basically the same. Okay, I'll leave my pinky, I think that looks better. So we got our octave G's, bring it up a whole step, we have our octave A's. Another whole step, see how we're keeping inside the dots, isn't that cool? These are all B's, B, B. Move it up a half step. These are our C's, so the C's are straddling that dot there. Okay, and move it up one more whole step. Those are our D's. Okay, don't recommend you curl your finger in like that. That's kind of uncomfortable. Don't do that. Okay, so those are our octaves uh, referring to the low E string. So guess what? When we go to the A string, we get the same deal. So here's our A string, right? I'm playing that as if I had to fret it. So we know how to do this. To find the octave, down two strings or over two strings, however you want to think about it, and up two frets. There's our octave A. We already knew that note was there, okay, but this is how it looks in reference to our lower A string, our lower octave, okay? Let's move this shape up to right here, fret one. We have octaves. What the heck is this though? It's not an A, it's not a B. This is a B flat. Okay, let's bring it up. There's our B. Let's keep going. We know that we have a C here. And now we know that we can find the C on the G string by linking it to this note on the, on the A string. So we have octave Cs, octave Ds, octave Es. F's, and then finally G's. Nice. That's how you have. That's how you find octaves. And now, when we go to back to our guitar journal, we can fill out all the notes on the D and the G string because we just played them. We just saw them in reference to the lower note, and we've 
completely finished all of what we call the natural notes, the letters, on the entire fretboard. Awesome. Okay, let's finish off our guitar fretboard. I'm, I'm proud of you. This is a, a lot of notes, so good job on sticking with this and mapping all these things out. It takes a lot of people uh, many, many years sometimes to figure out where all the notes are on the guitar, so nice job. Okay, so we figured out how we can find some uh, octaves, right? And we can use that to finish off uh, the D and the G string if we like, or if we can just think of the, uh, the pattern that we have going with the musical alphabet. Um, either way works just fine. So we know now that we have an E and an F here. We're going to have a G right here. We'll plug that in. And we'll just keep on going through. We'll have an A right here. And then we have our B. I had to think about it. Oh, there's only a B, one B right there. I never thought of that before. Go figure. All these years of playing. There's a B right there with no other natural notes on that fret. How about that? And then we have uh, a C right there. That completes all of that. Good. Over to our G string. We've got a B right here on fret four. Same deal, lonesome little B. Then we have a C. So this is, it's good to just study this thing. You just keep it somewhere and if you're feeling bored someday, just pull it out and look at all the different patterns. It's, probably takes a lifetime to recognize, you know, everything in this fretboard. It's, it's pretty wild. Okay, so just a few more. We've got a D right here. Here's our E. And there's our F, and we are done. You now know all of the frets on the guitar, all the, the notes on the guitar fretboard. So congratulations. Awesome. Okay, hang with me for just one minute. I know this looks crazy, this table of uh, major keys, but it's really gonna help you in your guitar playing and figuring out songs, and uh, especially if you're a singer and you need to put something in a different key, this is gonna be like gold to you, okay? So um, we learned the C major scale and how to play it, just single notes, okay? What this chart is showing you are what those notes turn into when you make them into chords. Okay, so the first one's a C major chord. That's the one chord in the key of C major. The two chord is gonna be a D minor, which we haven't learned yet. Okay, the three chord's in E minor, we know that one. The four chord's in F, okay, we'll, we'll deal with that another time. Uh, the five chord's a G, and the six is an A minor. The seven, this is a diminished chord, again, another day. Uh, and then we're back to our octave, okay? And it follows this major scale formula of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, okay? So it's always gonna be the same, that, that order, throughout all of the keys. So you can use this table to just change keys. Say it's in the key of C, uh, and you wanna put it into G, okay? You just follow down the column, and, uh, and you get your chord. Okay, so for instance, that uh, that blues we were doing the other day, one, four, five, right? A chord, D chord, E chord. You can put that in a different key if you like. Okay, so um, hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Um, it's one of those things that you just want to uh, keep with you, uh, print it out, or or better yet, you know, copy it into your guitar journal to have it. Uh, and study it, and as you go and you learn new chords and you learn songs, this will come in very, very handy. Okay, so, great. Okay, we're starting to see the fretboard, we're writing some things down about keys, but how do we put this to practical use? You know, if you have a song and you need to change the key, but you only know four chords. <laughs> G, D, E minor, and C. Well, this is how you do it. There's a thing called a capo. Okay, finally we get to talk about the capo. Say you know these four chords, right? And you have a song um, that has these four chords and you can't sing it because it's just too low for you, all right? And you need to get to a higher key, like A. Well, guess what? If you put a capo on fret two, now you may have to rewrite your music, and I'm giving you a um, little cheat sheet in today's lesson to change keys if you need to, okay? So with that cheat sheet and with this capo, 
Um, you'll be able to change the key of many different songs to suit your voice or to suit your limitations in only knowing four chords. I'm going to give you a sheet at the end of, of more chords uh, to play, but I really believe you need to master these four first, and then we can start adding chords later. Okay, so we have a key, um, a song in the key of G, and we need to put it in A. We put a capo here, right? If you play a G chord now, it looks like a G, doesn't it? But it's not a G. Just putting a capo here doesn't change any of these notes. All right, it's not like they magically rearrange themselves. All we did was we just clamped down this, basically shortening the fretboard. You know, everything on this side is just, there's nothing down here. There's just that. All the action is on this side. Okay, so we clamp down on fret two. What this allows us to do is to make a G shape right here and get an A chord because we know that that note right there is an A on fret 5 of the E string. Okay, So all you have to do is you have to know where your root notes are. Okay, So the root notes are the, the base of the note of the chord. Uh, it's what gives it its name. Okay, And you want to find where that note is. Don't worry about the other ones. We'll learn those other ones as we go along. Okay, Find the root note we'll see that this G is now an A. Okay, what about that, what about that E minor chord that we knew? Right? That's the E minor chord, but we have the capo here, so it's not an E minor anymore. It looks like one. The guitar is all about shapes. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but it's, it's all about these little shapes. And we just have to put a little bit of extra effort as guitar players uh, to find out this um, this whole crazy fretboard thing. Okay, remember you have six strings, you have six instruments in your hand, and we're trying to deal with it. Okay, when you make this chord right here, this E minor looking chord, it's going to get its name from its root note, which is found right here on fret two of the low E string. Okay, so what note is that? It's kind of a trick question because we haven't really talked about it much, right? We know this one's a G right here, we know this one's an F. All right, we're going to call this one F sharp. All right, sometimes you call it G flat. We're going to call it F sharp today. All right, so we have an F sharp minor chord now. We have an F sharp minor chord. We have an A. Now, if you're playing with other guitar players, you're not going to probably say, okay, let's go to the F sharp minor chord now. <laughs> you're just going to say, let's go to an E minor, because you recognize the shape. You can look at each other's hands and get it, right? But if you had to communicate this chord to a non-guitar player, right, you're going to have to tell them what it actually is. All right, so this is an F sharp minor. Again, this is an A now. The same shapes that we've been working on, though. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's go to this one right here. This one's a little bit harder to see. Now, this is a D chord, right? find the root note. Where is it? It's supposed to be on the D string right here. So what note is that? Look beyond the capo. You see that that note's an E. So this is an E chord now. Okay, so we're magically fi uh, finding and playing these chords that we didn't know how to play, just using the shapes that we've already been uh, working out. So that's an E. And then finally, the last chord that we know that we're we're playing with the C chord, okay? Here it is, here's the C, but with the capo, we need to know what this note is. This is why we're learning all the notes on the fretboard. This note right here is a D. So this is a D chord. C chord shape, but actually a D chord. It's about as clear as mud, right? I'm telling you, you're gonna get it, okay? Uh, it just takes a little bit of time and just playing songs. All right, so we have everything mapped out in our um, guitar journal, and we're just taking a look at these things. So that's how you change keys, okay? Study the chords, study your fretboard, use the capo, and you can play all over the fretboard. All right, cool.